Shalom, saints. Today we'll be tackling about not only spiritual warfare, but the weapons that God has given us. It's from Ephesians chapter 11, to, uh, verses 11 to 17. Like it or not, we were, or we are included in a war that started or began on day one. The day you got born again, you are already in the crossfires of the enemy. All of us, not only you, all of us. But God has graciously sent us or gave us, by the grace of Jesus Christ, the heavenly or supernatural weapons. These are supernatural weapons of victory that God has given us because He already has the victory 20, 21 years ago on the cross at Calvary. Amen? The victory is His one, but we still have to fight it because we're still on this planet. Verse 11, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the enemy. This enemy has a strategy, kill, steal, and destroy. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of this darkness, of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. This enemy is organized. He plays dirty, is cunning, and his objective is to kill, steal and destroy you because he hates God. He hates you because you love the God whom he hates. He hates you because he's going to be tormented in hellfire. And God has a wonderful plan for your life because he loves you. But this enemy hates you and has a horrible plan for your life. Mark my word, it's in the word. Wherefore, take unto you, verse 14, the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girded about with truth. It is for those of us who experienced a military training, underwent a military warfare, it is common to repeat an order. Twice or sometimes thrice, I say again, they will say, okay? The commander will say, I say again. It is a military command. It is not a suggestion. It's not an option. It's not a request. It's not an appeal. It is a strong command. You must do it. Twice, thrice they say it so that it is clear due to the urgency or necessity of the situation. The whole armor of God says what it is. It is what it says. I mean, the whole armor means it's not some but all. You put on some. That's not what it says. The whole armor of God is a complete set. It was designed to withstand the spiritual onslaught that the enemy is going to hit us with. He mentioned that in verse 13 and 14 three times. Withstand, stand, and stand. It says, having done all to stand, meaning hold the line. Hold the line, hold the line. Using what? First weapon, the belt of truth which is the truth of the cross and what Jesus Christ has done. In modern warfare, the soldier's belt held all and other equipments together, especially the armor and the breastplate and the sword and the sheath. Without the belt, all this armor and weaponry and equipment will all just be flying all over the place. Truth is found in God's word. John 17, 17. Truth is the person of Jesus Christ. John 14, 6. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. My question is this. Who holds you together? Or what holds you together? It's either the word of God or not the word of God. There are no two ways about it. Verse 14, stand therefore having your loins girded about with truth, or the belt of truth, and he said, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Okay. Righteousness is defined as the God-given quality given to man through faith in Jesus Christ alone. Sola fidei, in Christ alone. Not by merits, not by other actions, not by indulgences or whatever. It's only in what Jesus Christ has done alone and nothing more, nothing less. Jesus is the center and the Jesus is the center and the source of these weapons. So it's not the person, not us, it's but him. Okay. But take note, it says breastplate meaning front. 
There is no backplate mentioned. You are never to turn your back on the enemy. You are as good as dead. You are always on the offensive against the kingdom of darkness because you followed the lead of the Good Shepherd. The Commander-in-Chief who leads us to victory, He leads, we follow. He was victorious 20, 21 years ago, and I will repeat that again and again. He was victorious, and we will be victorious. Read the book of Revelation. It says two words, we win. Amen? Question, since the breastplate protects your heart, has Jesus remained the treasure of your heart? Because the Bible says where your heart is, that is where your treasure is. Jesus the treasure of your heart? If it's something else, then you are distracted already. <clears throat> For whoever or whatever holds your heart, that is where the problem. Verse 15, And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace or the sandals of peace. Roman soldiers wore thick uh, leather sandals that solidly embraced their ankles. They too had spikes in order to give them good footing. The worst thing that anyone can do, whether in life or in battle, is to lose your footing. In judo, if you lose your footing, you lose one point. And just like the commercial, you know how, how ugly that happened, you know, that commercial lifeline. Imagine this happening when you're in a fight. Help, I've fallen and I can't get up. Our firm foundation is the gospel the word of truth, that Jesus paid it all. Our hope is in Him, and we stand secure all because of Him. Verse 16, Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you could be, we would be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Faith in Jesus is where we are now. Faith is our bond with the Savior. Faith is in Him is what we live and obey. Faith is our shield against the lie which asks the question, Did God really say? Did God really say that? You only have to believe in the Lord Jesus and you are saved. Do you believe that? Did God really say the Lord will heal all, all, heal, all, all diseases? Did God really say the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sins? Did God really say the Lord provides? Did God really say that He loves you and has the best plan for your life? question is your feel is your faith shield stronger now since you have accepted jesus christ as lord of your life that shield is the only protection you have from the fiery darts for god's sake it better be thick verse 17 the helmet of salvation the head is one of the most vulnerable areas of our bodies one blow can be fatal you ask any martial artist all that training and armor would prove useless and the mind is a battleground whose prime target is the, the suggestions, the lies and deceit. Enemy attack comes asleep or wake. Awake by means of subtle suggestions, by media and advertisements, and asleep through nightmares that seem so real. Believe me, my wife and I have experienced this. Recommendation, keep your helmet on at all times. And last but not least, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The only offensive weapon is the Word of God. It is both written, or logos, and living, rhema. What blasphemy did its enemy commit when he used the Word of God against the Word of God? Big mistake. My question is, after all this time, do you know the Word? More importantly, do you live the Word? You are in a warfare, whether you like it or not. God has provided tools or weapons for this warfare. Learn to use them, and please, for Jesus' sake, put them on and keep them on. God bless you. See you in the battlefield. Shalom.